morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ero Terry Corpi. I'm the founder and CEO of Continuum, and I'm joining all of you <clears throat> from uh, San Francisco Bay Area. And as you may see from the, the, my background picture, this is actually a, a view from my home office window. The picture was taken yesterday. California is on fire secretly and literally, so that uh, we have, a, I think, altogether some 45 fires going on around the state and the smoke is heavy. So stay safe, stay healthy. We have a lot of challenges ahead this fall. Today's subject matter is about uh, MySQL availability and scalability. Continuous, a, as our tagline says, availability company. It always starts from the providing availability for the continuous operation on a business critical MySQL applications. And today's use case, this is the number four out of nine that we are going to cover on the back to back to webinars during this fall is about geographic scaling. Uh, Riot Game is the company and they've been our customer a few years now and you must definitely know Riot Games, they have a significantly popular League of Legends game. I think there's 300, 350 million game players worldwide and definitely the most played game in the world. And we are happy to have them our customer. And this is about uh, Initially, it was about their player account management system. Since then, they have uh, expanded the use of Tungsten quite, quite a bit. <clears throat> Before going uh, further, a couple words of uh, myself, uh, that what qualifies me to talk about MySQL, MySQL Marketplace and MySQL Solutions. I am a multiple software serial entrepreneur, and I've been on a MySQL Marketplace since early days. Uh, effectively when the MySQL really start hitting as a part of the core stack element for the internet applications. And uh, obviously continuous current uh, flagship product tungsten, I can call myself as a father of that product, but then something that you may not know, I could be also called as a godfather of Calera. And you know that also extra DB cluster and host of other names. Uh, <clears throat> there used to be a product called M cluster back in 2004. That was our first product for Continuum. And it was a synchronous uh, clustering solution for MySQL. So basically that's how we approach. We felt that was uh, too narrow focus wise. And for example, the, the subject matter we are talking today, geographic scaling of the, the MySQL application, that's not really feasible using a synchronous application solution. That's why we abandoned it, that solution back in 2007, eight, and we've been working on, on the current solution since then. And for, as you see from my picture, <clears throat> and living in the San Francisco Bay, obviously, oh, maybe not obviously, but many of us are sailors. And in my case, actually, I'm also a Navy officer. I want to like to think that I'm running a tight ship, both on the sailboat and my company for the benefit in that case, our customers and obviously my team. So, um, Smooth sailing, that's the, something that I most definitely enjoy, and I hope that you enjoy sailing with us as well. How does Continuum fit in in this kind of a picture of the, the current marketplace? We've been on the forefront of uh, open source technologies and cloud computing from the day one when we started the company. And it, it was about uh, MySQL, I think back in 2000. Two, and we initially started the project. MySQL, it was not obvious choice for the, the running a world class application and businesses as it, it is today. All, also, the cloud computing did not really exist at that time, but it, uh, uh, we felt that the, there was an avenue for us to be successful. And one of the things we wanted to build was it, uh, effectively a solution that you can run anywhere, whether it's uh, on premises in virtual machines or as we do a significant majority of our applications are running in the cloud. And our focus was basically providing a, a continuous availability for business critical MySQL applications. And on 
geographic scale. And that's where we are, the leading company. <clears throat> company is not the biggest on the, the even the MySQL marketplace itself is relatively niche. So we are, we are still a small player in relative terms on that marketplace. And we do not aim to be the biggest. But what we do aim is that we are the best what we do. And that's always been the goal, continues to be the goal. And we are happy to say that we definitely are. Riot Games use case uh, today. It's about the current uh, game access. Uh, think about that uh, millions and millions of players around the world trying to access their gameplay. The first thing they have to do is that they log in. And that's the, basically the, the player management platform is powered by continuum tungsten clustering. A few words about the Riot Games, a little bit more. Uh, it is US-based company. Today it is part of the Tencent. It was initially maturely acquired and then fully acquired by Tencent, so the uh, uh, large, larger company backing their operation. Riot Games is big uh, offices around the world, 2,500 staff members. They actually could be somewhat more today. <clears throat> And they started working with us on March 2018. So that in that sense, they are relatively new customer of ours. An average uh, customer with us typically is already seven years. Uh, so right, I think uh, three years is a relatively new customer. But uh, the, most of our customers stick with us long term. The initial deployment in the right games uh, is the one that we are covering today. It was just one application player account management, but it needed to be able to operate in four geographically distributed region. And the way we approached that was at the four tungsten clusters in, in various corners of the world. Today, Riot Games already three years later has 10 applications, maybe more, all business critical, powered by tungsten clusters. And we've seen actually a, a steps converting their, some of their Aurora footprint on uh, tungsten clusters as well. So Riot Games Challenge, as with any uh, company, when you have an online operation, whether you're a gaming company, software as a service, e-commerce, telco, any of these financial services happen to have 24 seven requirement for the availability. So that's always where it starts. And this is where our core and key focus has always been. But it's not only necessarily availability, local availability, you want to be able to cover your bases. So in, and in order to do that, you have to have a remotely uh, separated services and then you can basically fail over on those if and when needed. And obviously performance is an issue. And in this case, that uh, it was about uh, being able to operate locally with the low latency for the, the reading the information and uh, and then obviously then scaling the operation along that with the, the millions and millions of users. And the last but not least, <clears throat> cost is always a consideration. And a lot of the people who choose the open source, that may be the first one. There's hidden cost elements in the open source so that the, that needs to be mindful as well. Open source is not necessarily free, not as free as we tend to think about it. And the main challenge with the Riot Games, obviously, was about the availability, continuous operation, and then this fast local reads. So I think about that you're a game player in Europe and you want to access the uh, game. Uh, you do not want to access a server necessarily sitting in the US West in order to just kind of like quickly log in and be able to continue your uh, game playing. Uh, in this case, this is not full picture of the, the Riot Games deployment. It has the one primary cluster. And in, in the Riot Games cases, it has uh, three relay clusters. So the primary cluster that any and all account management information is being updated sits in US West. And then US East, Europe, and Asia Pacific have their own clusters for the initial kind of just the, the fast local reads. And then when and if there's any change, changes on the, the player information that actually gets 
updated in US West and then propagated back to local systems. Uh, today, actually, I would like to use an opportunity to have a Tyler Turk of Riot Games to talk about a little bit of a continuing solution. There was a really nice talk by Tyler back in November 2018 at the AWS reInvent. Uh, the whole <clears throat> presentation is too long to cover here. There was a kind of nice discussion why they chose MySQL. And then there's a discussion about the continuum. You may want to catch the whole presentation. It talks a lot about the building uh, applications and, and kind of how to operate highly reliable backend. But let's uh, talk about today of continuum on Tyler's word. So I'll jump here and I'll go on full screen. And here we go. Let Tyler present. So for our database solution, uh, we chose to go with a third party vendor service called Continuant Database Clustering. Uh, Continuant Database Clustering is made up of three primary constructs. The constructs, I'm gonna start from the bottom and work my way up. The first is a replicator. Uh, the way the replicator works, MySQL is not actually configured for any replication at all. It doesn't know that it's clustered. It doesn't know that there's any other MySQL servers out there. It's just a standalone MySQL server. The replicator reads the MySQL binary log and converts it to what's called THL, or the transaction history log. This log is then flushed to the disk before it is then replicated to the other servers in the cluster. This is done intentionally to make sure that you have the durability that is provided by the binary log in THL. Once the primary server has replicated this over to the uh, other two secondaries, these secondaries will receive that, add it to a queue, and then flush it to disk as well. So that way, if something happens in the middle of applying that transaction to the database, you have a point that you can recover from. The next component is the manager. The manager has two primary pieces. Uh, the first is being the cluster orchestrator and quorum manager. It uses jgroups behind the scenes to establish a quorum between all of the different uh, managers that are running, get the general health and well-being of all those services, and then provides an API that gives you health and metadata about which server is the primary, which ones are secondaries, which ones are supposed to be doing replication. And then the second component is the wrapper service. The wrapper is literally just a wrapper around the manager that monitors the health and well-being of the managers so we can restart manager processes in the event that there's an issue. The final component is a connector. The connector talks to the manager API to determine which server it should route MySQL requests to. In the way that we have it set up, uh, we have full control over our application so we can use read and write splitting based on ports. So we send all write requests to port 3306, that's routed to the primary server. We send all reads to 3307, and that will be routed to whatever server is the most up to date with the write master. Once that's done, uh, you're able to access all of the data however you need in any other region. There's one other way that the connector can be ran, uh, and that is actually with an inspection mode. We run it in what's called a bridge proxy mode. The inspection mode will actually analyze the MySQL query that you're sending to it, and then using JDBC, rebuild that query, potentially do optimizations, and then send it to the appropriate backend. Uh, that's really great for if you don't have control over uh, doing read-write splitting, but we prefer the lower latency pr approach of being able to split it ourselves. I've spoken briefly about having uh, four different AWS regions that we run this in. When we first started this project, US West 2 was the hub of all of the Riot Direct networks. So if we had traffic that was going from US West 2 to Europe or US East to Europe, both of those ended up actually routing back through US West 2. This made it really easy for us to decide to put the primary database source in US West 2 as it's a central hub. Then uh, the way the replicator works in this scenario, since we have four different AWS regions, you'll notice that there are three relays up there, one in each region that's not US West 2. It's basically a hierarchical model that the relay will talk to that primary server in US West 2. It will get all of the THL, make sure that it's properly added to the queue, flushed to disk, and then replicate it to the local secondaries that are there in that region. This provides us a global consistency model that doesn't add too much strain just to that one primary server and make sure that we can replicate all of that data worldwide. We chose uh, this instance type here. It's an R4 8x large, uh, reason being it's a good amount of memory relatively high CPU. Most important reason, 10 gigabit per second networking. Uh, we wanted to make sure that whenever players modified their accounts, we'd be able to really quickly replicate that over to another environment. 
We also knew that we had several hundred gigabytes of player data that we were going to have to migrate into this. So thinking forward, we wanted to make sure that when we imported all this data, we'd be able to make sure that it got everywhere quickly. We use a five terabyte SSD or GP2 EBS volume for the data volume. That is where all the MySQL data and the general uh, continuum tungsten clustering suite software goes. And then we have a 15 terabyte EBS volume that's leveraged for uh, database backups, the THL logs, and the MySQL binary logs. Uh, we also have a couple additional helper scripts that we wrote. Uh, since we treat this kind of like standard data center infrastructure, we know they have static IPs. We wrote some Apple OSA scripts, so that way we'd be able to just run some simple commands and SSH into all of them at once, do some triage if we needed. Uh, and we also have a good amount of Ansible automation that we've leveraged here. Thank you, Tyler. That was a nice presentation of the deployment and the fact that uh, project teams have uh, <clears throat> since uh, first deployment on this one back in 2018, added nine more clusters is the high word of confidence and the uh, continuing solutions. And this is the kind of uh, how the deployment works and the, the way that Tyler was explaining that uh, they basically, they have this one master cluster, primary cluster in the US West, and then they have a relay clusters in, in US East, Europe, and Asia Pacific. And when uh, all of these uh, uh, applications are connecting to this, uh, what we call composite cluster through connectivity layer connector, uh, which is globally aware so that you can actually can <clears throat> connect from the whole system from a single point. And all the updates, as uh, Tyler indicated, will end up in US West, getting uh, basically relayed, replicated into local clusters. And when your customers start reading, they actually are reading in the local reads. And our system was proven to be quite effective uh, earlier this year there was a South China Sea weather event, a significant typhoon, uh, compromising some of the network connectivity. And AC Pacific system was effectively knocked down for a while, but all the players in that region were able to continue because the, the tungsten connectivity layer was able to guide them to uh, remaining data centers across the world. This is the <clears throat> how uh, Riot or any of our customers could uh, manage their clusters. We have obviously command line interface for those and API, so the automated operation. But uh, if you want to ha have a visual view of their cluster uh, and all the clusters, um, you would use tungsten dashboard included as a solution offering. And here is the, a little bit deeper view on the same uh, dashboard showcasing individual databases. <clears throat> Let's take a look. Uh, I have a, a cluster running here. This is an active cluster in AWS. Uh, it is not Riot Games own, but we tend to build uh, these clusters for our benefit and our customers' benefit so that uh, uh, we can effectively help support our customers. And if we, for example, take a look, uh, right now we have a <clears throat> the, primary cluster with the, the key primary database is DP1 and in US West. And we have an alternative clusters here uh, in different parts of the globe uh, deployed in the AWS infrastructure in these specific regions. What happens that the, uh, if a database is lost, let's say go and I have a um, pipe connected to database one, Oh, shoot, this is my daughter's email here. No worries there. So that's this one. And close it down. And let's go take a look what happens here. The database one failed. And what happens <clears throat> that a tungsten cluster automatically chooses the database that is the most up to date, in this case, DP3 promotes that as a new primary database. And also then DP2 connects that as a local uh, replica. And same time, as you can see, we, uh, other clusters go through the steps to reorganizing it because the, now the, the, since the database one, you know, it's no longer is the main primary database, it's database three. 
they need to connect the replication layers correctly. And voila, this operation takes in a matter of seconds on the background, as you noticed. And from the game player's point of view, who are accessing system, there was no delay. Basically, the, the local clusters were continually operating all the time. The one primary cluster in US West, there was a short delay servicing the users, but the connections were not lost. And that the, from the, it was just a slight delay in operation. When we check the database, if we decide that it's defined to bring it back, there's a basically one call recovery <clears throat> that we can reintroduce that the failed node back in, in the, the cluster. And what basically it starts the MySQL recognizes that the last transaction ID number catches up to the point that the, the current primary DB3 is and then reintroduce this database as uh, one of the, the replicas in the local cluster. This process does not have any impact on the other clusters. So this actually is quite, quite nice and quite smooth process. And, and this takes a while depending on what's the load on the, the <clears throat> database, the size of the database. But at the success, now we are back fully operational, all green, all the time and everywhere. The last step, if you want, but not necessary, because typically these databases are identical compute instances, uh, but at the, <clears throat> from the, the, maybe some other operation or cleanliness point of view, we do want the database one to remain the main primary. And we can do <clears throat> what we call switch. And this is really handy when you need to do any type of a zero downtime maintenance operation, what you do the effectively rolling rolling upgrades, uh, all the, the replicas will be updated, upgraded first, and, and then the current primary will is the last one. And, and when the, the other updates have been done, we can do a command switch. And this effectively flips the, the, uh, the primary from DP3 to DP1. Once again, this happens uh, online without any real interruptions on the, the on the, the actual database service level. Let's put the refresh back on so we can actually see what's going on and how it happens. And this also takes a while because it, the, there's an element of the doing the processing and reconnecting all the, the back end because this is not only cluster, but this is a cluster of clusters. So we think there's a more into than simply switching over from primary to replica and back because we also have to reestablish the connection, all the, the other clusters. But as stated, all of this is uh, basically a continuous operation and from the, the whoever is accessing the, the uh, uh, application wouldn't know the difference and it, it just continues to operate. And here we go. back in the presentation. So we discussed about the availability, just to recover performance aspects of the, the, the fast, fast replies. Uh, obviously, the, one of the key elements is, of, is also the cost. The bigger the company, uh, maybe the more financial resources they have, but they have chosen uh, open source technology for a reason to still kind of try to manage and minimize the cost. Continuing solutions are commercial uh, software subscriptions uh, on top of the, the open source database engine. Uh, it is based on annual subscription. It includes the 24 seven support, but we are mindful about the, the being an operating in open source realm. And that's why that the, as the initial jump, uh, first few clusters obviously are a little bit more expensive, but when somebody keeps adding, like in Punk Thrive Games game case, when you have a dense hundreds of uh, uh, MySQL nodes, the product price does not increase in linear fashion. Actually, it levels off quite significantly. We also value loyalty and long-term 
long-term commitment. As indicated, many of our customers are have been with us multiple years, and we have a lot of customers who actually, instead of doing annual commitment, also make the, the three-year commitment, an upfront uh, payment, and they get the added benefit of the, the decreased pricing per note. Some of the biggest customers of ours have a thousand MySQL instances clustered, and one particular customer actually have another thousand replication units, with effectively feeding uh, and uh, reporting and analytics engine engines from those clusters uh, with uh, about another thousand tungsten replicator instances. Uh, going back, the reasons availability, disaster recovery, scalability, cost, and the last but not least is 24-7 support. This is something that we value very highly and not only ours, software provides continuous availability of business critical MySQL application, but we want to be available when and if needed, uh, should anything happen. So we realize that there's a revenue stream that that's to our, our application and any activity needs to happen effectively immediately for us helping and at a high level of knowledge. Continuum products, just to kind of a recap, uh, what we offer, uh, what are these? Tungsten clustering, this is what we've been talking about um, today. And a quick recap on the, the key highlights and benefits that you get from the tungsten cluster. It's about the continuous operation. You can do zero downtime maintenance operation during the daylights on instead of a, somewhere in the middle of the night during the weekend. You can build geographically distributed MySQL clusters, and these are effectively single lane from the application point of view. You can run these on premises in the cloud. We have customers running in multiple clouds, both AWS and Azure and or Google. You can even run hybrid cloud deployment. This is really handy when you want to migrate from a on-premises deployment into cloud deployment. You can run parallel both, both instances and at some point switch the flip and then go all cloud. Uh, solution is also includes a highly intelligent uh, proxy and for the, it's not only reprice splitting, but that's among one of the things that it does really effectively and helps to scale. Uh, and let, one other item, it is a full MySQL. It's not a MySQL compatible solution. We are using any and all MySQL versions available and you do not need to make any application change to use our solution. Tungsten replicator, that's actually one of the core components of the, the tungsten clustering. But tungsten replicator is not only homogeneous replication from one MySQL instance to another. That's what we use it for the clustering. But you can also replicate into various targets, could be uh, analytics, Amazon Redshift, it could be a messaging bus like Kafka, it could be a vertical column database like Vertica, and host others. There's um, multiple targets that we support, and this is not even complete list. Uh, and we can use all kind of um, <coughs> um, topo topologies that there is the family in, family out, primary, primary, uh, and we have a really extensive powerful filtering capability for example if you need to replicate from let's say from mysql into oracle database that requires to the data type up changes on the fly so that we can actually uh, change the date type or other similar things that uh, on the fly and this doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one replication you can actually drop tables and you can do obfuscation and other things with the, the filtering on the fly. Tungsten replicator as tungsten clustering both are available as an AMI in Amazon Marketplace if you want to kick tires. Tungsten dashboard, we already took a look earlier. Uh, this is separate product, but offered free of charge for our customers. So that, um, and this is going to be our front, front, front end for our upcoming tungsten cloud offering as well. Going a little deeper on all the benefits that Tungsten offers, you may find surprising that once again, we are bringing up the support as a first benefit, but it is actually pretty significant. So when you think about that, you're running a business critical application, 
uh, when the software itself should provide availability support. Obviously, software has always some kind of uh, uh, issues, maybe self-inflicted, uh, something that the operation we done, but who, whatever the fault was, we want to be there available. We do provide 24-7 support with one hour uh, SLA, but in real, reality, that the re response time is far, far better. If you take all of our customers during the past two years and calculate an average of the response times when an urgent request came in, it has been consistently less than three minutes. And the, the team that offers the help is not just a phone support. These guys all have 15 years actually in, I think it's over 20 years experience on being a MySQL DPA or site reliability engineer. So that you can actually trust the software and you can trust the team behind. And that's why actually this is the number one feature that we offer to our customers. Cost savings, we come to across it sometimes that do it yourself solutions backed by the, the uh, remote MySQL DPA consulting firms. Uh, but if you really calculate it, especially if you have a slightly bigger deployment, continuing solution, even if it's a commercially offered uh, annual subscription solution, tends to be less expensive than all the loaded cost, the total cost of operation, using just the open source and patching things together. So you may want to do the math with us and see what the reality is. Thanks then, real key benefit on the software functionality point of view. Uh, it's, it comes down to availability. This is where we started almost 20 years ago and we continue to be on the path. It was always about uh, uh, being able to uh, not only replicate locally, but remotely. So that by doing that, we get the disaster recover capability. Having an intelligent uh, business flow based at, uh, management software that can make automated decision. Local failover is automatic, fast, sub-second level. Disaster recovery steps uh, also is a one-step one command. It's effectively a site level failover. We want to automate that, <clears throat> but we do not want to make it automatic because there could be some flooding with the network connectivity or just some other network related issues that actually the data services might, might be just fine. And so we want to make the, the human uh, decision that whether the failover is needed on the site level failover. Most of our customers value highly the zero downtime operation. If you are a software as a service vendor or if any kind of online application like this uh, Riot Games gaming application, there is effectively no maintenance window. You need to be able to do anything and everything while the system is up and running. And our solution effectively allows you to do that, whether it's a upgrade on the, the hardware level, the underlying operating system, underlying database version, uh, schema up, updates, upgrades. You can do all of those things without the bringing the system down. Scale, just scale, this is the, definitely what the Riot came to us. They needed to be able to distribute the operation in geographic scale. And we have a number of customers that uh, value this highly. And we can do this <clears throat> in such a way that the Riot Games did. They have a single primary cluster and multiple relay clusters. You can also do active-active operation to have a multiple primary clusters across the world. This goes down to the, your need and what you are aiming to uh, emphasize. Obviously, when you have an active-active type of solution, it becomes a little bit more complex because there are multi, multiple ways to uh, replicate information crisscross across the world. So there are some additional considerations to do that, but uh, willing and able to deploy that type of solutions as well. We discuss about the <clears throat> ability to run any type of environment and mix and match those, <clears throat> excuse me. And, and this is actually pretty, you are running predominantly on, for example, AWS. You want to have a credible threat that you can take the workloads elsewhere with our system and software effectively allows. And that gives you a pretty good uh, pricing negotiation power because it, uh, you are not in one specific environment and you can run is it, uh, and mix and match so that it's just for the migrating and be happy. 
And a few other, we already touched these and we can go even deeper. Both of these are pretty significant elements. The intelligent MySQL proxy, one of the key secret ingredients that the tungsten cluster has, it's because it uh, effectively, it manages the, the traffic. Uh, it's a traffic cop between application and, <clears throat> and underlying data service. But this traffic cop is not only locally aware, it knows the global traffic, it knows the roles of underlying data services, which one is the, the primary cluster, for example, and which one specific database instance is the, the primary database within that cluster. And if there's any changes taking place, proxy and tungsten manager uh, it, together coordinate the operation that we can execute these automatic and automated operations. And also MySQL replication, uh, we discussed about that in depth already earlier. One of the things that uh, we do want to stress last but not least, this is not a MySQL compatible solution, it's, uh, it is MySQL. And you can use any version of MySQL you want or MariaDB to that extent or Percona server or any, any specific MySQL uh, instance available, community MySQL enterprise and such and such. We are tapping into MySQL binary log, so we are not adding any extra uh, load on the, the, uh, the basically primary database to increase the performance when you do the basically read scaling on the, the replicas. Um, and this allows you also to move things around. <clears throat> it's not like a AWS Aurora, which is a MySQL compatible solution, which is effectively locked in. So it's easy to replicate data into Aurora, but it's really difficult to get data out from there. We want full freedom uh, for our customers. <clears throat> Obviously, we, you can use the, the secure connections. All the traffic is secured SSL in flight, and you can encrypt, encrypt the underlying data as well at place or in place. And that means that uh, you can build, like some of our customers are, for example, HIPAA compliant uh, medical data solutions, or you could use that for the, the financial transactions, as a number of customers of ours do. Quick question. Uh, you could send the answers via chat window, just to kind of a uh, are you actually actively looking today a MySQL availability solution? Maybe you have something already in place, but you're not quite happy with it. Or maybe you already have a solution and you are really happy so that you're just curious what we have got to offer. So that's works for us as well. And, uh, or maybe that's something in the future. All of these options are good. And we are happy to help when you are ready. So we are not aggressive sales organization. We expect you to reach out to us instead of us reaching out to you to help you when the time is right. As uh, departing words, we have a really proven team. Core team has been around a long time. Actually, uh, some team members have been in and data replication, database connectivity, and database cluster management, even before 2004. But a lot of the team members have been uh, with us a long time. And members have a long, long uh, experience operating. <clears throat> and we not only want, but in reality, we are available to help your needs whenever you re reach out to us. The reply is in minutes. And the person who replies to you has a deep knowledge on MySQL database and also on our software. So you can expect to have an immediate answer to whatever issues you might have. The solutions are proven. Uh, you most likely recognize a number of these companies and names. Uh, billions and billions of transactions are being processed every day. Billions of dollars of revenue combined across these customers. Uh, we are safeguarding, uh, for example, Adobe, Adobe uh, Sign e-signature solution is completely running on tungsten clusters. Another Adobe company, Marketo, actually we are celebrating a 10th anniversary of Marketo being our customer uh, within the coming weeks. And they built from many so few clusters now consisting uh, actually hundreds 
of uh, tungsten cluster servicing marketing analytics. Uh, other customers I'm sure that uh, you recognize here, we discussed about today with Riot Games, there's also VMware, and also the, the companies like the, the F Secure and, and Motorola and others. We would welcome you to join on this prestige list of customers, not a complete list here, but uh, some of the highlight customers. Why would you choose Continue? Obviously, uh, we expect you to choose based on the uh, software capability and the team's technical prowess to be able to help you. But when and if you join us, there's other, other elements as well that uh, to consider. Most recent customer satisfaction study gave us 100% mark on fully satisfied customers. I'm sure there's a lot of things that we can continue improving and we do improve. But uh, the, the fact that we have reached that level of with the current offering is gratifying. And we also see this through the, the renewal rate. Last year, 97.5% customers renewed. Yes, we lost actually one customer, but not because of they chose a competing solution. It is because of the, the underlying solution. This was a software as a service failed. It didn't meet the, this large the telco providers uh, uh, own criteria to continue business and they chose to close it down. Understandable, nothing much you can do about it. And we built long-term relationship. When, when and if somebody joins us, we fully expect them to stick with us five to eight years, maybe longer, so that uh, uh, we approach that. We never try to do anything quickly. We, we take our time to onboard our customers and we take care while they remain our customers. And one of the things that uh, may, may be kind of a highlighting, 70% of our customers are software as a service vendors. It doesn't mean that we wouldn't, but it is kind of that gives an idea who typically enjoys the benefits to what we offer. We have a host of e-commerce, financial services, telco and gaming customers as well. All of these are running MySQL databases and using for the business critical apps. Some of them are startups, some of them are enterprise level. We have a number of customers that have joined us when they were early stage of the Bean startup, just being acquired by hundreds of millions of dollars. So in some cases like the Marketo was acquired by uh, Adobe for almost $5 billion. So we want to be part of the value creation and, and success of the, the, your businesses. And uh, we've been around and we continue to be around our future is in the cloud so that to keep and stay on lookout on that space but to be honest <clears throat> significant majority of our customers are already running most of the instances in the cloud i would assume some 70 to 80 percent of uh, tungsten cluster services actually is already today in one of the major clouds whether it's aws azure or google Thank you, everybody. It has been uh, my pleasure to cover Riot use case, use case and uh, also to discuss about the benefit of tungsten clustering. JJ, did we have any questions during the presentation? Yeah, yeah thanks, Eero. Um, uh, and yes, and so if there are further questions, feel free to use the question and answer section of your control panel which you should see uh, on your screen and you can ask your questions there. Um, we do have a couple of minutes to uh, to go through them. And uh, we do have one question ever, um, already, which is related to Aurora. And uh, mm -hmm. you, know, uh, you know, was there any discussion with Riot Games and did they ever consider Aurora? And if they did, you know, why did they end up choosing Continuant then? And, uh, you know, what are the main differences maybe between uh, Continuant, Tungsten and um, AWS Aurora? Sure. Yeah, and most definitely uh, Riot Games ha has been using Aurora and continues to be using Aurora <clears throat> for some of the applications. Uh, it's um, Some of them are DevOps type of uh, environments instead of uh, necessarily business critical deployments. But for the, this particular uh, application, Aurora was not really a choice. Even if the, the <clears throat> Riot Games is fully committed to an AWS environment, uh, uh, some other customers may consider that as a lock-in and they do not want to go Aurora because of that. 
But the, in their case, they were actively looking at a solution that can have this geographic scaling. Aurora is a great solution for the local availability. Uh, more recently, it has got some of the, the DR capabilities, but actually being able to build a, the, this type of a geographically distributed application when you have updates taking place in, in one location and then you have a fast reach on the, the secondary location is not really feasible to do. And Aurora actually ends up being pretty costly solution as well as the bigger the system comes. Uh, the other things that they're be mindful that uh, some of the customers uh, are considering Aurora as that because uh, it's a MySQL compatible solution. It's not a MySQL. So it, uh, it's built on 5.7 and to uh, capability level, 5.6, 5.7 features. It's not even 100% complete on that feature set. It's lacking uh, effective MySQL 8.0 capabilities. And it's also lacking some of the MariaDB capabilities so that the, when you choose that path, you're actually taking yourself from, uh, away from the main line and you will not necessarily benefit from the, all the new feature functionality that's coming from the, the MySQL community as a whole. And then when you're considering possibilities moving from one cloud to another, whether it's AWS, or Azure, or Google, by running things uh, on this type of uh, database service, which is compelling because it, it provides effectively managed data services and you think that uh, you don't need the DPAs. That's also the wrong assumption, but that, that kind of initial sales pitch uh, so that that's fully automated thing. So, that, um, so when you sum everything up in uh, Riot Games and, and from a Tyler's point of view, Continue was really the only solution to do what they wanted. And when you think about some other customers, they do see uh, ourselves giving them far better flexibility going for and more options. At actually, when you con consider a total cost of ownership, that element as well. So all in all, I think we have a better solution at lower cost, which makes it pretty compelling. Great, um, great, thanks, Aru. And I don't see uh, other questions for now. I mean, even though, of course, we you know we're, we're still here. So, if you do have questions, feel free to ask them uh, by using the Q and A section of your control panel. Uh, but in the meantime, um, Errol, if you have any closing words, we could listen to them now. Uh, I think we're, we're good for now. Sure. Thank you for listening to this uh, webinar. I said this was the fourth one out of nine. Uh, use case webinars we are going to run during this fall. So if you want, please take a look on there are all recordings done, all of the prior ones, and then next ones will be coming in uh, coming weeks. Uh, so, and whenever you are interested in having a chat with us, uh, please do contact us, uh, so to myself or any of my team members. The process we typically go through is that we have a an hour long deep dive call with you discussing about your specific needs and requirements. And then uh, should there be a fit, then we execute free of charge uh, proof of concept to deploy a solution that you might be interested in and building and providing you ways to kind of a proof that what we claim to be able to do, we actually do. So feel free to contact us at any point, but uh, thank you now. Be safe out there. Bye now.